Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel RF Design Basics. So in today's video, we are going to give you a tutorial on how to design a CPW line. So CPW line is basically a coplanar waveguide line where there is a strip and two ground plane which is in the same side of the strip and in between the strip and ground plane we have some gap so let us say the width of a strip is w and the gap is s then using w and s and the height of the substrate dielectric material we can calculate the impedance of the line if I need 50 ohm line we can adjust the W and S value to get 50 ohm line for a given dielectric material having dielectric constant epsilon r and the substrate height h so let us consider we have a dielectric material FR4 having dielectric constant 4.4 so I will type 4.4 here this is epsilon r and the trace width and ground plane spacing we have to find out for 50 ohm line so for that we have to fix the substrate thickness let's say it is 1.6 mm now by giving the width and spacing we can find out the 50 ohm line so let us put the width as 3 mm which is normally for a micro strip line and then try to analyze and see how much is the Z0. So we are getting very high value of Z0. So let us try to reduce the value of spacing between the ground plane and the strip. So we will put 1 mm and then analyze it again. So we can see the value it is 71.163 ohm. That means it should be further less. We can put 0 0.5. Now we are getting 57, we can reduce further 0 0.4, it's 54, 0 0.3 and it is approximately 50 ohm. So we are going to fix our width of line as 3 mm and the spacing between the ground plane and the strip is 0 0.3 mm and we will design coplanar waveguide line. Let us go to the HFSS. So first of all to design a CPW line we will take a box then this box dimension we will give as in y direction we are going to take a 20 mm line and in x direction we are going to take a 15 mm width so it will become 15 x is my 15 so start from minus 7.5 comma y we will start from 0 itself and z will be 0 x size will be 15 mm y size is 20 mm and z size is 1.6 mm so we will click here so that it will fit into the window so now it is fitted into the window and we have the substrate ready here over the substrate we have to draw a 3 mm line so for that we are going to choose a rectangle and we will draw rectangle and give the value here as y will start from 0 x will start from minus 1.5 because the width is 3 mm so it's minus 1.5 comma 0 comma 1.6 x will be 3 mm and y is 20 mm which is the length of substrate so this is how we can draw the line middle line and then after a gap of 0.3 we can draw the remaining line so for that let us take 
another rectangle so here this rectangle will have x position as minus 1.8 because 0.5 minus 1.5 is the ending of this line so we will add 0.3 so that there will be a gap and then y will be 0 z is 1.6 and in x direction we have remaining length equal to 7.5 minus 1.5 is 6 mm minus 0.3 so 5.7 so in x direction it will go to minus 5.7 and y will be 20 mm click ok so we have this line which is in the negative x side then similarly the same line similar line can be drawn in the positive x side and we can just copy this and paste it here control c and click control v this is rectangle 3 in rectangle 3 we have to just change the negative sign to positive sign and we will get the line these two are ground plane and middle one is the line so next is the substrate assignment we will go to the box here we will put substrate as FR4 which is 4.4 then for the boundary assignment select all these three combine it together so that whenever we select one all three will be selected and then right click assign boundary and say it is perfect electric okay so here we can see the boundary is assigned as perfect E now the next one is to design the excitation port and for that we are going to take wave port and to take the wave port first of all change this xy axis from xy to zx axis so that I can draw a rectangle over here and take rectangle and draw it. Now we will change the dimension of the rectangle as follows. In x direction we will take 10 mm so we will start from minus 5. y direction is 0 because this is in zx plane so y will be equal to 0 then z will start from minus 4 and x will be twice of the 5 that is 10 and in z direction for have uh, same distance below the substrate and above the substrate so it will be 4 below the substrate above the substrate also should be 4 and 1.6 is substrate height so total is 9.5 6 mm and we will click OK. Similarly, for drawing rectangle in the other side, we will just copy this rectangle and paste it in the other side. For that, Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So, there will be rectangle 5. In that rectangle 5, we have to just change the position of Y which should be equal to 20 for the other side and we can see both the side we have same rectangle drawn now we'll just go to the first one and assign the wave port right click on the first one assign excitation wave port next next finish similarly we'll go to the second second one and assign the port right click assign excitation wave port next next finish the wave port is assigned now we are going to draw a box 
we have to take the y dimension of box same as the substrate dimension so that it will touch both the excitation first of all draw the box and give the dimension of the box as x position in x direction the dimension of substrate is 15 mm so we'll take 20 mm so minus 10 comma y dimension is 20 mm starting from 0 and in z direction we will take 20 mm so it's minus 10 20 20 and 20 well box is drawn here you can see and we can also see these wave ports are in the same plane of the side of the box now we will assign the boundary as the radiation boundary select the box and right click assign boundary and here we will choose radiation and click ok so this box is chosen as radiation boundary and the material in the box will fill this with air now we can hide the box and the next step will be to analyze this we have to give the frequency sweep so right click on analysis add solution setup and here we'll just increase the number of passes little bit for the exact solution and then go to the setup one right click add frequency sweep and here we will choose 1 to 10 gigahertz display ok now we'll check whether everything is ok so it's fine and you can save it and now we'll simulate this to see whether the 50 ohm line is designed and it's transmitting from one port to another port so analyze now to check the result we have to go to the results create model solution data report rectangular plot and choose all the S parameter by pressing control you can choose all the S parameters in DB and new report we can see here these two lines are S22 and S11 which is much more below than 25 dB that means both the sides are matched to its characteristic impedance also you can see another line which is approximately at 0 dB this is nothing but S21 or S12 that means transmission from port 1 to port 2 is happening with very less loss because approximately 0 dB so there is less loss for lower frequency higher frequency loss will increase so it's deviating from 0 dB but still it is transmitting fully from one port to another port to check whether our ports are having characteristic impedance of 50 ohm or not we have to just go to the result and then create model solution data report rectangular plot and here we will plot port Z0 and we can choose both of them Z0 1 and Z0 2 and click on new report and we can see that the value of the port impedance is between 52 to 52.8 so that means it is approximately near to 50 ohm so our result is correct and we can plot s parameter 
and this CPW line can be used for feeding any of the CPW antenna and the similar technique for giving port will be used for CPW antenna without ground. Thank you.